Welcome back, uh, dear viewers. You're still watching the breakfast show, and in the segment of our program, we'll go back in history. We'll talk about King Akhenaten, is considered one of the mysterious kings in ancient Egypt. We'll try to know more about his life and Tal al Amarna uh, village or city which uh, he built at uh, that time as a capital for Egypt. And to know more about uh, this interesting issue, we are joined by uh, Mr. Samir Abbas. Uh, he is Egyptologist. Uh, good, after, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, uh, Mr. Abbas. Always a great pleasure to have you uh, with us. So we're continuing. Uh, our series of viewers about uh, the mysteries of, uh, of ancient Egypt and uh, Akhenaten of course was the successor of his father Amenhotep III, one of the most successful pharaohs of the New Kingdom uh, period. So thanks for the great introduction and thanks for some of the in-depth uh, knowledge about Akhenaten and his period, his city and that's a very good start to start with his father you know but before before going actually to go to the chronology and the father and the history of Akhenaten. So I need to attract our audience that you know how important this subject is. So Akhenaten in recorded history, he is the first human being to promote for uh, monotheism, yes. the worship of one God. So from religious point of view, we know that Abraham is like in history, timeline is before Akhenaten. We know that Adam and Noah is in history, timeline is before Akhenaten. But they haven't left any records behind. So in recorded history by the ancient Egyptian people all over the world, so he is the first human being to promote for monotheism. Mon and that's make him a very special character and a very rich person to a very rich leader to study as well. So when we, when we come to Akhenaten, we also will talk about a very famous uh, historical uh, celebrities in ancient history, uh, Nefertiti, his wife, and his beloved wife, as he described her. Uh, Tutankhamun, which is only 10 or 15 years ago, has been proven that that was his son. We will talk about his father, which mm. is uh, Amun Hotub the third, which mm. is a very successful king, you know, in the New mm. Kingdom. Mm. And we will talk about his city as well. Mm. The city mm. which is he built, mm. which is it was a lost city for a very long time. You know, we never knew about him or even his city uh, until until, yes. until the, the beginning of the 20th century. Mm. So that is the beginning because simply so because of his reformers from his point of view not being adapted, not being tolerated in the community in that time. So the wife is history. And in his history... Because he called for monotheism? That is, that, no, that's, that's, one of the that's one of the reasons, you know, yeah. I will answer that in details now. Mm. So, and only discovering his new city, and that was by accident, that opened a big door of knowing this person without discovering Tal Amarna, which is lies south of Armenia today, we will know nothing about this dynasty, and this is a very important period of Egyptian history. Mm. So this history is the best example or the prototype of a very uh, common story which is happening every day and happening all over the history. The, the relationship between religion and politics. Mm. And, uh, and it came to its peak in the ancient world during the time of Akhenaten and that's why it will be a very good example actually uh, to refer to that. C can we go uh, uh, back uh, to, to Amenhotep III before yes. talking about uh, Akhenaten? And, and, and I'm very in personally very interested in this um, uh, uh, king because uh, I was always studying it with my kids yes. in okay. social studies and he see I mean he looked to me like one of indeed yes. as the Wikipedia says as the history says one of the most successful of all time and not just the, the new kingdom I, I mean his yes. his wars his, the expansion the victories the uh, rise of Egypt so you, you, yes you were talking about his successful mm. king as a leader as a leader as a warrior mm. as as a, mm. a builder and maintainer of an Egyptian big kingdom which is that was the biggest empire in the ancient world in that time but there is also another perspective of Amun Hotub the third which is as a lover as a human being so his wife is Queen T, uh, T a very beautiful girl. Uh, he married, she is, she's a commoner, she's not from the royal background. Mm. And in ancient Eve to be a king, you have to be married from the right woman. Mm. Not the beautiful one, not the rich one, but mm. the one which is, has the pure royal blood in her vein. Mm. Amun Hotub III, as a lover person, he decided to break this rule and marry from the woman he loved, from a commoner, Queen T, and he was almost sacrificed his throne. 
And that's the mother of Akhenaten? That's the mother of Akhenaten. Wow. So in, it's a very, a, a very, there is a very beautiful statue in the Egyptian Museum. Actually, I brought, I brought actually with me in the different uh, mm. photos and illustrations I brought with me, which is showing Akhenaten and Nefer and, and Queen T together. Sorry, uh, I'm a part of the third yes. and Queen T together. So normally in the traditional Egyptian art, you see the king in a big size and next to him in a miniature statue of the queen. So during Amenhotep III, he introduced his wife in a completely different way. He introduced his wife in equal in status with him, equal in size and equal in importance, and she was not from a royal background. So that's another perspective of Akhenaten. That's so a wonderful perspective. Sorry, again, I'm, I'm, I'm always saying Akhenaten referring to Amenhotep yes, III yes, because yes. I'm in my yes. mind that I came to talk about Akhenaten today. Anyway, that's a wonderful so perspective, yeah. So Amenhotep III, uh, also another thing which is quite interesting for him. So he had a very interesting, he had a, he had a very interesting foreign policy. So uh, he maintained his kingdom by army and marriage. So he married from, uh, of most of the famous, big, powerful tribes of the Middle East. So the palace was like a United Nation. So he loved Queen T so much, but he had next to Queen T almost like 20 or 30 other wives <laughs> come from different nationalities, from different backgrounds. And that was tolerated back in that time, you know, for political purposes. Understood. And, uh, so, so he married the woman he loved, uh, yes. and he married other women to maintain his yeah. kingdom. And so uh, he has an he's excuse. a lucky man. It, he's an he has an he's excuse, you know. He's so that he's excuse, man. I would like to maintain my kingdom. Yeah. I like to yeah. strengthen the bond with my... Uh, with my uh, like partners, you know, yeah. out there by mm. marrying from their family. Yeah. So, and uh, so, which is mean that, you know, that's, that's, that is our access to Akhenaten and his personality, to understand, you know, why and how Akhenaten come, came with a different personality than the other leaders, than the other kings of ancient Egypt. So, he grew up in a palace. You know, think about these ladies, which is, they come, they come from a rich background, they come like, they are daughters of the leaders of different tribes mm. in the Middle East. And they come with their servants, with their slaves. Mm. So uh, think about 20 or 30 women from different backgrounds living together in the same palace where Akhenaten grew up. It's like a United Nation. Mm. So you grow up not only hearing and learning about your own perspective of life and your own religion and your own culture, but also you grow hearing about that all of the world, the ancient known world, uh, culture and traditions in that time is like traveling today. It's like spending time in traveling today. So he grew up in this environment. And add to that, to make it more complicated, that he was not the heir to the throne. There was an ill... I was just going to ask about mm -hmm. that, because it's, it's really wonderful that he became the, uh, the, the king and he's mm -hmm. the mother of the Egyptian commoner, yeah. uh, and not, uh, he's the, 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 I mean, the son of the um, Egyptian commoner woman, and not uh, the son of any other um, wife. So uh, the not other wife is not count because mm. they are not coming from Egyptian blood at mm. all. So, so even Queen T, she was the commoner, but she was elevated by her husband as the chief queen. And her son will be the heir to the throne. Mm. So that was already done deal. You know, there is no talk about it. During so Amenhotep's life. During, during Amenhotep mm. him, uh, himself, mm. you know. And to be honest, she proved that she was a very powerful woman, you know. Mm. So she was the one which is hold the kingdom together when her husband get old and, and sick. And even after his death, when Akhenaten was very busy and distracted with his new ideas and beliefs, she's the one who kept the kingdom together, Queen T. Mm. So she really proved that a commoner can really do a very good job, even sometimes better than a royal. So going back to this, mystery there yeah, well. to this international community, which is Akhenaten, which is grow up. So another, another complication that he was not the heir to the throne. There was a third theory that mm -hmm. an elder son, which is he was the one which is trained and educated to be the king of Egypt. But early death, which is make him, make them shifting the leadership to Akhenaten after that. Any suspicion about his brother's uh, death? Uh, nothing I know. So mm. there is nothing I know, and there is nothing I read so far about his, his death. You know, in that time, so the death rate was quite high. Mm. You know, there was no antibiotics. You know, mm. there is, you know, yes. you can get uh, like uh, uh, any a fever and a virus can, would a vi be deadly <laughs> exactly. automatically. Yes. And we will never know. So, mm. in, uh, so uh, he, uh, so I can imagine he was not trained to be a king. And that was very important in ancient Egypt. Because in the, the reason why ancient Egyptian kingdom was stable, and flourishing and, and civilized and rich for more than 3,000 years because they have very strict uh, rules and codes for their leaders. 
and they have a very strict religious codes as well. And with these religious codes, the king or the pharaoh, he had the power over the kingdom. So the problem with Akhenaton that he was not trained on these traditions. And he grew up in a community that, you know, so they have multi-traditions. They have different traditions as well. So mm -hmm. he grew up and he became the king and he chose Nefertari, uh, Nefertiti sorry, mm -hmm. to be his wife. And then he started talking, he had a, a completely different talk about a new, not a new religion in that time, but he was elevating a god, which is his name is Aton. So in that time, the royal family used to live in Thebes, which is mm. nowadays Luxor. That was the capital of Egypt during the New Kingdom, 18th dynasty, 19th dynasty, more, uh, more specific. And he started talking about Aton. Aton was already exist in Egyptian mythology a long time before, but he started elevating that, you know, to give Aton, 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 Aton sorry, to give Aton, which is more, more importance. So not only, he started building shrines for Aton inside the temple of Karnak. Karnak is the home of Amun, Amun-Ra. Amun-Ra was the most important king in the New Kingdom. It was like a big corporation, you know, so they have a tremendous wealth all over. They can train all over the world in that time. So, and they have an army of priests. They have a very strong economy, not only actually a religious, but a very strong economy as well. Yes. So for him to build uh, shrines for Aton inside Karnak Temple, in that time it was slightly tolerated, you know, because, because in Karnak Temple was a complex for many other gods as well. So and I think that uh, there were political and religious conflicts uh, in that period. Definitely, that was lead to the that, yes. that was lead to the political religious conflicts. Yes. So, inside him, he was not convinced hmm. that it should be the power given to Amun hmm. as a god. So, inside him, we still don't know what was exactly the motivation or what was exactly the thought inside him. But it seemed that he didn't like the idea that the ancient Egyptian religion is based on Amun alone, especially that in politics that was causing problems. Hmm. So, these problems start to appear from. Uh, the Sphinx. Now we will we will go to another place to the Sphinx. Mm, you know, yes. so those who have the chance to go to the Sphinx and uh, stand between the two balls of the Sphinx, Sphinx, which is a very restricted area, and you need a permission to do that. Mm. So there is a stela erected and between the two balls of the Sphinx, dates back to his grandfather Tutmosis the Fourth. Grandfather saying that, uh, thanking the Sphinx for making him the king, and and as a reward, as a payback to the Sphinx, he cleaned the shifting sand from around the body of the Sphinx. So the Sphinx in that time was almost a thousand year old. The Sphinx in that time was a thousand year old. So, and also a temple aligned with the Sphinx, built by the grand-grandfather, Amun II. So, which is mean that, so the ancient Egyptian kings, two or three generations before Akhenaton, they knew that there is a problem and it is not right to give the whole religious power for only one god and his priestess they start manipulating religion, they start uh, influencing mm. politics as well. Mm. And that's why they decided to shift the power away gradually by making up a story. You know, Tutmode the, thir the, thir sorry, Tutmode the fourth story in, in the Sphinx, from my perspective, it is made up a propaganda in order to shift the power away from the priests of Amun mm. just to declare the Sphinx, which is his name back in the time, Rahur Ahti, as the guardian and the one which is make him the king, not Amun. You get the point? Mm. So. They are trying to walk away from Amun gradually because the priests of Amun became very, very intimidating and very interfering in politics. So these conflicts came to its peak during Akhenaton. He's young. He what, 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 sorry to yeah. interrupt. What was Amenhotep the third doing with those priests? That's, that's I mean, a how, very good. How was the relationship that, that's a very good him. point. Yeah. Because because Amenhotep the third, so he was trained to make a compromise. He was trained to keep the balance. And because if this balance has been shaked, the, the entire kingdom will collapse. So Amun Hotop, he was slightly trying to elevate a tune without upsetting the priests of Amun. Mm. Uh, he built a nice house, a nice villa in the west bank of Luxor with a beautiful uh, artificial lake or swimming pool for his wife. And he named it after a tune. Mm. And that's how we know that there was a plan mm. for getting a tune, you know. So. Mm. so we are talking about a tune, which is, I haven't told you what is a tune is. A tune is the rays of the sun. Mm. In ancient Egyptian tradition, religious tradition, there is difference between Ra and a tune. Ra is the sun disk, mm. Mm. but a tune is the rays of the sun. Mm. And you see that a lot in the, in the art of uh, Akhenaton period. So, but when it comes to a young king, came to the power, not being trained to be the king, according to the ancient Egyptian tradition, he took things to, his, to the extreme. He wants to change things quickly, 
mm. upside down in a short time, like mm. teenagers, naturally, like naturally, yeah. naturally, and that's why he started pushing, like shrines of atun inside cornic timber, which is a priest he didn't like, but he kept it. But suddenly, an overnight, that Akhenaten make a completely different shift. And instead of religious tolerance, alternating atun with amun, he decided to turn the tables. <laughs> Mm. upside down mm. and he decided to close Amun, the god Amun temple. Mm. His mother was still alive, Queen His Z. mother was still alive, yeah. you know, and, and so... She, she had a role in, in, in politics? You know, yes, you know, she was actually without her, you know, so mm. Egypt will collapse mm. in that particular period of time. I, I mean, because in history, do we know that she advised her son? Definitely, yes, yeah. definitely. We have a recorded history that she, she, was, she was a counselor, she was advised, she was even working behind the back of her son to keep the country together, to compromise. So what he did is, that was actually, I, I think in real five or six of years reign, so he closed the temple of uh, Karnak. He changed his name, by the, by the way, Akhenaten, that is not his original name. His real name is Amenhotep the Force. Mm. Amenhotep has the word Amun in it. Amun mm. is blazed, mm. that is the meaning of his name. Mm. He changed his name from Amenhotep into Akhenaten. Uh, uh, like the servant of uh, the servant of Atun or the the benefit of to, uh, uh, to, mm. to Atun and then he closed Karnak temple and that was a very big uh, problem because it is not only about religion it's about big economy as well and and religious power too and, ups and that upset lots of people he decided to build a new capital Mm. And he chose, that's what will come at the end of our episode, the new capital and how beautifully it was designed and the location, the ideal and the smart and the intelligent location for building this new capital. So he built a new capital to shift the power away. And it was far, far away from Luxor. Yes. I mean, yes. uh, south of Mania is far from Halfway Luxor. Halfway between Luxor yeah. and Cairo today, yeah. you know. And that was an ideal location, to be honest. From my perspective, that will mm. be the best place, you know, to mm. build a capital. So we should I will come mm. to, to that mm. why later on. Mm. So, and... Uh, not only, he decided to chisel, he sent his army and his guards to chisel out the word of Amun, er erasing Amun from the history mm. of Egypt all over the places, all mm. over Egypt, even from his father's name, Amun Hotub mm. the third, his father's name has the word Amun on it, he decided to chisel the word Amun from his father's name. So there is something which has happened in that time which is is not in recorded history, which is make him like turning 180 percent, uh, like uh, sorry, degrees. 180 degrees against mm. him like that, against them like that, possibly an attempt to assassinate him. That is my personal actually scenario. Mm. That's because when you think about closing Karnak Temple do, and challenging. Sorry, Mr. Abed, do we know how old was he when he uh, started getting at the uh, Amun um, I think priest and, and building and, and thinking of building the early, er, early 30s. Early 30s, early 30s okay. you know, er, and he died around, uh, he, ruled, he ruled only for 17 or 20 years, mm. and his death is still a mysterious, you know, because his body, w there is a body which is found in KV 55 in the Valley of the Kings, which is people speaking about that. So that if we talk about the body, before. let's move to talk about his, the tombs uh, where, uh, that were uh, discovered and they were dedicated to him. So he, he built also, he changed the traditions of building tombs in yes. ancient Egypt. In ancient Egypt, the tombs are in the west. Most, if you looked at the pyramids of Giza, mm. they are in the west of Cairo, in the yes. west of the Nile River. The pyramids of Maidum, the pyramids of Dashur, the pyramids of Saqqara, the Valley of the Kings, you know, 90% or 95% of the ancient Egyptian burials, they are in the west bank of the Nile River. Mm. Because they believe in the sun dies there and to resurrect with the sun again, you have to follow the sun course in the west. So he was buried in the east. Mm. Following the rise of Aten, in a very narrow valley, which is very much like the Valley of the Kings, but in the opposite direction. Mm. And instead of having a tomb for himself only as the king, as the divine king of Egypt, he have a, he have a tomb, a family tomb. And that was also something which is unusual, mm. to have to plan a tomb for his wife and his six daughters. He is, he is uh, we call him that's Abul Banat, which is the yeah. father of, he has six of daughters. Of the girls, yes. Uh, uh, the six daughters. And also one son, which is he planned a tomb for all of, for all of them. In, in his new city, and that was also another break. Not only in art, when you look, I put some actually photos and illustration, which is, that is by the way, that's mm. one, uh, this photo comes from Tal that is the ruins of what's called the North Palace. Mm. 
uh, there was at least two palaces there, the main palace and the north palace. There was also big temples. So look at this actually photo and see how the, f the affections between him and his wife, you know. So I brought this one, which is not realistic at all, because that shows that how Western scholars uh, Apart, um, imagine him. You know, not imagine. And his wife. They actually, they, uh, they uh, so faked. They faked. Yeah, he looks know. like a European. <laughs> exactly, he looks like a European than Egyptian. And that is pictures, actual actual picture from the site, which is showing the ruins of his city, which is, has been discovered in the early of the 19th century, uh, 20th century, and is still being excavated until until today. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, he he make uh, he established a completely new tradition. Even when you look at the art style, you know that's the stila, uh, which is called the boundary stila. He even made he erected boundary stilas like 14 of them as far as i remember i'm not very sure about the number but about 14 boundary stilas all around his capital and his capital was extended from the limestone quarry in the far east to the limestone quarry in tunnel gabel in the far Th west that's like a great wall isn't it exactly it was like a natural wall no. more specific yeah. natural wall because natural. this limestone ridge yes. like a mountain that yes. was that stands for protection as well yes. and in this and the reason why he chose this place because he can easily protect the mm. site mm. because uh, there is the nile river or the nile valley comes to its widest in this place and which is to grow lots of food, which is for increasing population. Mm. So halfway between Luxor and Aswan, which is the best way to control the whole country, north and south together, like halfway. And Luxor and Cairo, you mean? Uh, sorry, Luxor mm. and Cairo, sorry. Mm. And which is, I also put a map which is showing the exact location of Tal Amarna, which is from, uh, from urban landscaping perspective, that will be one of the best uh, places to have a capital to rule the whole country. But the problem is, he is not trained to be a leader. He was more like a religious revolutionary person. Uh, he was more like a philosopher and a teacher. Uh, he was, uh, he spent a long time meditating in the temple, writing down religious hymns, which is his religious hymns I didn't find with the Psalms of David, which is very similar to the Psalms of David. And that's why, that's why uh, I would like to come up to a very interesting topic, which is from where he got his influence of monotheism and uh, pow power should be for only one yes. God. So, so I guess the question must be uh, during which era, uh, I mean he lived, which major prophet lived maybe in his era around? That's actually, you're reading my mind, Muhammad. Mm. You're really reading my mind because, mm. because when you think about all of these ladies which is married from his father and he lived and he grew up among them, different is he came from the area where Abraham grew up where Abraham teachings spread. Mm. And Abraham teachings, he was uh, the father of monotheism. Mm. And he grew up uh, listening and understanding about that. And also, and he grew, on, on the mm. other hand, he grew up with, with, with seeing how complicated politics in ancient Egypt and how much the priests of Amun mm. have a very strong, a very bad influence in Egyptian politics. And that's why he came with a solution. He brought an Egyptian god, Atun, and he introduced, reintroduced it in a form of monotheism uh, without an idol. There is no statues. With building a new style of temple, which is nobody has to pay offerings, like in the uh, moon, there is no statues there, and everybody is free, not only. He looked at everybody is equal. In the ancient Egyptian tradition, Wonderful. religious tradition, that it was looking, and that is the main reason why I loved him most, because mm. he looked at people from other backgrounds, from other nationalities, as less in importance. Mm. In other words, they were racist in their view. Mm. But he is the first king, maybe the only king in Egyptian history, to talk about equality between the human mm. being, whatever their backgrounds. So definitely, he was a subject of a real religious teachings comes from Abraham's. And that's influenced him to come with what he has. So another very so interesting... So can we say that he got his fame from his wife and his son? more that's a, that's, a, that's a good point you know because mm. never Titi became more famous than him yes when I, I was in Berlin three weeks ago and four weeks ago more specific and I was dying to go and see the head of Nefer, uh, Nefertiti. I was like, mm. had, a, had a very mixed feelings inside me. As an Egyptian, I need to buy a ticket, you know, in a foreign country to go and see uh, the head of statue, which is literally stolen from Al Amarna, switching boxes, you know, in, in the time. And you cannot imagine the only piece in, the only piece in, 
and Berlin Museum, which they've seen, is display a room in its own with three or four guards around it. And you cannot take photos there. Mm. And it's in the best display ever in the Berlin Museum. And when I was reading the, the tag about it, I was became more upset because they never talk about, they never speak about how it was taken. It was talking about preservation, restoration, but they never talk about how it was uh, preserved. Anyway, so yes, he became famous for yes. that. And we cannot say that he became famous for Tutankhamun because the link between him and Tutankhamun only happens in the last uh, mm. 10, 15 years. Yes. I guess there is much, much, much more to talk about. And unfortunately, uh, the, the time, I really felt the time was, was <laughs> tight uh, on us. Um, mm. uh, dear viewers, we promise you continuation of the series Mysteries of Ancient Egypt, and specifically to talk more about uh, King Akhenaten with Egyptologist Samir Abbas in the upcoming uh, weeks, um, uh, God willing. Um, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Abbas. Sorry to, to, to end it here, but we must um, uh, um, stop here. We have uh, another segment, and please remember where we are so we would continue from where we... To be continued. Yes. Where yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Samira, and the dear viewers, short break, and we'll be back with our second segment for today, so stay tuned.